Hey everyone, this is your host Ruben. Thanks for tuning in this week. I hope you had a good week, good couple days. Uh, let's get into it. guys let's start off by saying a little prayer Lord I thank you for everyone listening in today thank you that you cherish their life Lord that their life has meaning that their life is important to you you created them Lord with a purpose with a plan with a goal in mind part of the grand story that you're telling they're part of your heart because you love them as a father loves a child I thank you Lord I pray Lord that they would feel that today that they would feel your love and how much you care for them that that feeling would grow inside them that an overwhelming boldness would well up inside them, Lord. A boldness, not one out of pride, but just out of certainty, out of assurance. The way a child knows that their parents love them, that they can depend on them, that they can trust them. I pray that everyone listening to this podcast would feel that way about you, Lord, that they would know you in that way, Lord, that you would build them up in that way, Father God. Starting today and every day, every day after, I thank you, Lord, because I know you answer us when we pray, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In your holy name, we ask for these things, believing and receiving and knowing that you answer us, Father God. Guys, he loves you so much. He loves you so, so much. You know, this, the title of this message is Life. We're going to be talking about life today. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that talk about life. Okay? I mean, there's so many. I mean, the Spirit is life. That's one of them, just off the top of my head. You know, um, John 3.16 God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life that's like one of the most famous ones of all you've probably heard that one even if you have never read the bible John 8.12 I am the light of the world Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So, if you walk in his ways, you won't be in darkness, but you'll have his light in your life. You'll you'll literally have life in your life. So, there's so many scriptures. And, you know, the world, they want us to concentrate on negativity they want us to concentrate on our uh, our our downfalls our failures you know not to not have hope to not have joy to not have any type of faith but here's the good news Jesus came to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. That's what the scripture says. And how how can we have that more abundant life? It's not talking about these treasures that men worship. 
you know, money, cars, fame, you know, titles. No. The abundant life of knowing that we're forgiven, that our sins have been paid for, have been washed clean. And yes, we can go to heaven. We've been forgiven by God. That he took that punishment upon himself. And even though you say, I'm not worthy, I don't feel worthy, I'm still messing up. You are worthy because he made you worthy. It's not anything you did. It's everything that he did. And he did it all because of love. He gave you life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. We were in death, but he brought us into life. He resurrected. You know, he even says about himself, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. So let's believe that. Let's chase after God and believe his promises that we are who he says we are. We're accepted. We're cleansed. We're changed. We're made to be different in his in his eyes. He no longer looks at us at our sins, at our death, at, at you know, our darkness, our dark hearts anymore. Because why? Because we've repented, we've turned from those things, we've turned to him, and we've allowed him to wash us over and to forgive us. And and if you're going through a, a hard spot right now, and let's say you have an addiction, you have some problem that you're trying to overcome, the enemy's gonna come against you, he's gonna say, <laughs> Yeah, right, look at you. You're doing this every day, look what you're doing. Here's the thing I've learned. I've gone through some stuff. I've, I'm still going through a few things here and there. Yeah, the enemy's gonna come at you with that, but that doesn't make what Jesus did invalid. It doesn't make it any different because he paid for the past, the present, and the future of everyone's sins. He died 2,000 years ago. I wasn't even around. He knew all the things I would do. So I have to believe and know that I'm forgiven and keep moving forward and let that forgiveness and that overwhelming love of what he did, let that penetrate my heart and let that love of what he did transform me. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen that love transform me. I've seen that love change aspects of my heart that were not right. They were not right. I didn't want to give them to God. You know, when I was younger, when I was a younger Christian, I was very focused on what I do and how much my righteousness was worth. And even though I knew the scriptures, Oh, you know, our righteousness is are like filthy rags before the Lord. I knew that. But I didn't really understand it all the way. His righteousness is the only thing that counts. And His righteousness is the only thing that transforms us and makes us righteous. And once we truly understand that, once we let that wash over us, it cleanses us. It changes us. So let's start allowing him to do his job. Trusting him. Believing him. Saying, God, you know, use me. Do with me as you will. I come before you humbly with all my flaws, with all the things that are wrong with me. But knowing that I'm forgiven, that I'm loved, that I'm accepted, that I can go boldly before your throne because you care for me. You did all these things for me. And that everything that 
enemy throws at me are all lies because he doesn't want me to come into your presence. He wants me to wallow in my sin, fight against you, and to continue sinning. But I know that you have great plans for me, and you created me for something more than that life. You created me for a life with purpose, according to your ways, to receive a crown of life, to enter into heaven with honor, to be called one of the sons of God, to leave and walk out of darkness and into the light, the light of life. So help me, Lord, to walk steadfast through my trials and to look in the mirror to reflect in any area, Lord, that I'm not trusting you with and to truly give it to you and to let life reign in my heart, to let you reign in my heart. I don't know if there's anyone listening today this made sense to you maybe you haven't been living out your Christianity this way because you haven't you've been taught you know you're backslid and you're messed up you're this that you know the punishment lifestyle you know the way that a lot of people preach that you know oh you know you messed up now you gotta climb this ladder to get all the way back up there no You need to accept this. God loves you. He accepts you. Just come back to him. Accept that you're forgiven. And start saying that every day to yourself. Let him change you. He's going to do it. I'm going to tell you what. At first I thought it was silly. But I saw the transformation in my life. I saw how I I was able to overcome some addictions in my life. Some things that were hard for me. And for those of you who haven't begun that journey yet, and listening to this, maybe you got filled with hope for a minute there. I'm telling you, the Lord, He loves you. He created you with purpose too. He's calling you. There's a reason why you heard this message. There's a reason why you clicked on it. There's a reason why you stay tuned in and didn't just go listen to something else. Even though maybe there was distractions. Maybe you were distracted and maybe something told you, hey, come back and finish listening to it. If that's you, the Lord's calling you. The way to the Lord is easy. He said, give me your burdens. Because his burden, he'll give you his burden. His burden is light. So, if you haven't accepted the Lord, just know this. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all, you know, we're dead in our sins. We're all in darkness. We all need saving. We all need a savior from our sins and the only one that can do it has to be perfect and flawless and there's only one who's like that which is God and he came down to earth his name's Jesus he came and paid the price on the cross 2,000 years ago and all you have to do is ask him to come into your heart believe in your heart that he died for you Confess with your mouth that you're forgiven, that he's your savior, and you shall be saved. That's what the word says. Don't be ashamed of him before men, and he will not be ashamed of you before the Father. I promise you, if you say that prayer and you go and you mean it and you go before him, it's going to be the start of a beautiful life and a walk with God that you will never regret. If you ever need 
someone to talk to, someone to pray with, someone to hear you out. Join the community. Reach out to us. Email us. Email. Let us know. Hey, I can, even if it's just to say, hey, I accepted Jesus today. Because we rejoice. We get happy about that. The angels in heaven get happy. Leave a comment that you accepted the Lord. All right, guys. Well, that's all for tonight. I thank you for tuning in. I truly appreciate every single last one of you that tune in. I feel honored to be able to do these videos. Uh, keep praying for me. Sometimes it's hard to do these videos. Sometimes I don't know what to say, but I just have to let the Holy Spirit guide me and uh, give me the right words. Love you all. Thank you for listening this week. God bless you.